Hi everyone, what's up? Well, I do hope everyone enjoyed the second part of the feeding video with all those teas that I did not feed, but now they are. So now it's time to make a new tea video and something very exciting is happening to my collection. I haven't actually witnessed or filmed the molts of one of my teas in years. So now I have the opportunity to actually film one. So right now it's uh, 9.57 in the morning, as you see here. And my Acanthus scuria broccolhursti, giant white banded. As you can see, she's very female. Look at her epigastric furrow. Is currently on her back molting. I just put water in there, so that way she has plenty of humidity. I'm just going to be putting on the humidifier as well. And we're going to document how long her molt takes. I'll uh, film it in between just to show you the molting process and how it works. That is so cool. I have an also another one that's in pre-molt right now, the B. Smithy, as you saw, Scarlet. She still hasn't molted yet, and then my Lassidora Kluge. That's also going to be molting. Okay, so I'm probably going to anticipate this. How on earth did I tell that she was in pre-molt? Oh, there we go, she was moving. Well, um, she had a molted for a long time. I documented a I think her molt was back in 2011, 2012, I believe. So it's been about a year, year and a half since she actually molted. So that was one indication. And second of all, that uh, she didn't eat. Now, Acanthoscuria species are one of the very few genus of teas that eat, like horses, next to, you know, well, there's actually a little bit more, like Lacedora, Pamphibedius, uh, Pocletheria, and such. So... Pre, uh, not eating is sometimes an indication of pre-molt behavior. You can't really determine this if you have like a a uh, Calcodes, uh, B. Smithy, G. Poker piece, because sometimes they do fast. But uh, this one hadn't molted in a long, long time, so yeah, that's how to determine she was in pre-molt, and she didn't really have a bald spot too, so she doesn't really kick hairs because I don't really bother her too much. But yeah, I can't wait to see how big she's going to get. Right now she looks to be five and a half inches. So, like always, I'm going to sex the molt for you, prove to you it's a female, and we'll measure her and see how large she originally was and what she'll be now. Okay, so it's 2.54 p.m. And we're documenting my Brocklehursty molt. So, as you can probably see right now, she's pulsating. She's starting to move now. So, between 9.30 and this time, she wasn't really doing much. She was just on her back. So it's very normal for tarantulas to lie on the back for that long. The molting process doesn't really take that long anyway. It takes around one to two hours for the molt. And we'll see. I'll get the flashlight so you can actually see her. Alright, 3.36 p.m. So it's about 40 minutes since that last update. And now, she's actually starting to molt now. You can see on the bottom, this is where her new exoskeleton is pushing out of her old one. And if I look at this angle, You can start seeing the chlorocyra come out. And you can just make out her carapace. Okay, so about 3.54 p.m. I have little Leah with me. Yeah. As you can see now, she's really starting to molt now. where she's at now. Okay. So you can see the fangs. A little bit of her legs too. Yeah, she's gonna be a huge girl. Isn't that right, Leah?
Okay, so it's 4.07 p.m. A little after 13 minutes after initial recording. And you can see she's probably nearly halfway done. And you can see the new legs are starting to come out and quite beautiful, I might add. She's kind of chunky now, which is to be expected since it's a pretty bulky species. The fangs are enormously long, and they're white. So it takes about a week for a tarantula's fangs to become white to black. That's when you can actually start to feed your tarantula and rehouse them. When they're fully freshly molted like this, they're really soft and vulnerable. So it's not a good idea to touch them in any way or try to feed them. Just give it plenty of water and they'll be fine. So this is the way tarantulas molt. What they'll do just before they molt, they would make a wet bed and they would lie on top of it on their backs. On very rare occasions will they ever molt on their side and that's kind of dangerous to do. I actually have a few videos of tarantulas molting on their side, namely one of my P. cambridgei, mature female. And basically what they're going to do is they're going to lie upside down and they're going to wait for about a couple of hours before they have their strength. And then they're just basically going to push themselves out of their own body. And the molted skin is called the exuvium. So you can see she's almost pretty much done. She's getting her last few legs off. Pedipalps are fully out. Oh my goodness, look how large it is. Yeah, she's going to be cool. Yeah, she's probably going to be like 6 inches, maybe a little bit more. Canthus courier bronco hersey's got up to, I would say an average 7 to 8 inch leg span. And I got her around six years ago as an inch spiderling. No idea on what sex it was. And after like two or three molts from that one inch uh, specimen, I sex it to be female. A male would never be as large as this, that's for sure. Okay, so 5.03 p.m. And my... April Kirsty has just completed molting. So right now, after a molt, what teas will do is they'll start to groom themselves just before uh, they will flip right side up. Hopefully I can catch that. But yeah, she is looking great. I can't wait to see when she flips over. Okay, so it's 6.36. We're going to look at the Brockle Hursty Molt. So I'm actually doing a PowerPoint presentation for my students. Applied. Secondary 3, grade 9. So, doing the digestive track, you know, following the order. I made some acronyms too, like my peeps expected something small like rabbits. And then the digestive glands, salivary, gastric, liver, pancreas, intestinal. Some guys like purple ice cream. I hope it works for them to remember. Okay, so my Brocklehursty has just finally turned herself over. So I would say that's about 9 to 18, 9 hours for her molt. So I'm going to open up the Oh my god, is she beautiful? Uh, she has got to be at least a good six and a half, seven inches. Yeah, she is very beefy now. So I'm going to go ahead and 
Turn on more lights in here. Get this here. My goodness, wow, she is beautiful. Very happy that I actually witnessed a molt in my tarantula room. Yeah, it's actually been a while since I actually last saw one. So, I'm going to close my book. And we are going to sex the skin and then measure it. For people who uh, need a fresher course on measuring tees. Okay, so I am going to be opening up the admin area like I always do. That is nice molt. Really, that is one nice mold. Oh, yes. Definitely female. And it should really be obvious for everyone to see. So, this is the spermathicae. Over here, the four book lungs. And it's right over here. There's the flap. Let me just give you a little better shot in macro. You can see the spermathicae right over here in the sperm sac. Now, to measure your T, you take a ruler and measure the tip of the first leg to the tip of the last leg. So my molt is stretched out and perfect. Line it up. Okay, it's in millimeters, so. Yeah, as I thought, she was about six inches. About 15 centimeters. Actually, she might be a little bit more. Yeah, six inches. That was her molt. And just to give you an idea how big she was if I were to originally handle her. My gosh, she actually covers my whole hand. That is one big acanthus curia. And she's probably still going to have to grow a little more for her to get their full size. So once again... The molting process, molten sex, of my newly molted, or I guess six and a half, seven plus inch female, Canthus Guria Brockle Hursty, the giant white banded. Hope everyone enjoys it, and thanks for watching.